That's it. I'm done with it. I'm going to remove it for good forever. Docker Desktop is probably the tool I've been using the most. It's been on my computers for the last 10 years or so. I've been using it every single day. And now came the time for me to remove it and replace it with something else. There are quite a few reasons why would I do that? Why would I get rid of Docker Desktop? To begin with, I might need to pay for it or to be more precise, the company I work in might need to pay for Docker Desktop. And there is nothing wrong paying for software that you need, for software that is strategic to your company, unless there are better open source alternatives and there are. I found a combination that works better, at least in my case. Let me start by saying what I really, really need. I need a way to build container images, to push them to a registry, and I need a local Kubernetes cluster. As far as Kubernetes is concerned, when running on my laptops and on my desktop computers, it needs to be K3S. It is my favorite Kubernetes distribution, at least when running locally, because it's lightweight, it is fast, and it is generally speaking better than anything else that we might run on our laptops. More importantly, it is so much better than Kubernetes baked into Docker Desktop, which I haven't been using for a while now. I've been using Kind or K3D, both of them running inside Docker Desktop with Kubernetes that comes with it disabled. But that always felt kind of weird. Why would I run K3D or Kind inside of Docker Desktop that already has Kubernetes baked in, even though I and disable it and long story short there is a better alternative and that alternative is called the Rancher Desktop. It is based on K3D, it does what it needs to do, it allows me to select specific Kubernetes version that I want to run which is very important because I want to be as close to production as possible. It is fast, it has graphical user interface if I ever need it which I rarely do maybe for selecting Kubernetes versions and so on and so forth and I already explored Rancher Desktop in one of the previous videos so check it out if you're not familiar with it. I will not go into depth of what it is because hey, that would be duplication of work. There is a video, go and watch it. The problem with Rancher Desktop, at least at the time when I explored it, is that it comes with Kim or Kubernetes Image Manager, which does not really work as expected. It is not a valid replacement of Docker Desktop. So I found and I've been using for a while a real, a good alternative to Docker itself, and that alternative is called Nerd Cuttle or Nerdy Cuttle. The problem with Nerdy Cuttle itself is that instructions, at least official instructions, are explaining how to set up Lima virtual machine that will allow you to manage and run containers and build and push container images, but it does not come with Kubernetes. So I never thought that that's a really good option because I would have to have two solutions, one for Kubernetes, another one for building container images. So I discarded the combination of using Lima and Nerdy Cuttle because it doesn't give me everything I need. But then all of a sudden, Rancher Desktop changed the strategy and added Nerdy Cuttle to its package. So now we have two options. We can use Rancher Desktop with Kim or with Nerdy Cuttle and Nerdy Cuttle is the real deal. That's the one I want. And that was the missing piece that prevented me from ditching Docker Desktop in the past. If you combine the two, if you combine Rancher Desktop and Nerdy Cuttle that comes now baked into Rancher Desktop, we have everything, or at least I have everything I need. I have a local Kubernetes cluster, which is absolutely amazing. And I have an equivalent of all or almost all Docker commands. I can run containers, I can use Docker Compose. I mean, I do not use Docker Compose for a long, long time now, but I understand that many people do. Anyways, with Nerdy Cuttle, we have equivalent of all or almost all Docker commands. And if we combine it with Rancher Desktop, we have a complete solution. We have container management, image management, and Kubernetes cluster running locally. And that is what we are going to explore right now. We are going to go through the demo so that you get a feeling of how it works and then we are going to talk about it and I'm going to tell you that I'm almost there because there is a secret here. I did not remove it from all my computers. I have three computers 
one desktop, two laptops, and I removed Docker desktop in favor of Rancher with Nerdy Cuttle in two of them. One is still running Docker desktop, and I'm going to explain why that is the case later on. For now, let's take a look at how it works and whether it is a worthwhile investment, whether you should use it. But before we go through the demo, let me tell you a bit about Nerd Cuttle and the history behind it. It is a project within Container D organization. That means that there is a strong relation with Container D, and that's a good thing because Container D is the de facto standard for running containers. It's not Docker. Docker might be what you consider standard on your laptop, but in Kubernetes clusters, in servers in general, it is Container D. It's just that Container D is a subset of what Docker offers, and it is probably the most important part of it. In any case, Container D is the golden standard for running containers, no matter whether you know it or you don't, because more often than not, it is hidden from you behind Kubernetes API. And then the team behind Container D started a new project called Nerdy Cuttle. And Nerdy Cuttle has a couple of important features. To begin with, it is supposed to give us the same user interface and user experience as Docker. It's supposed to fully support Docker Compose. So those two features are more about making the transition to Nerdy Cuttle seamless, to make it compatible with Docker. And then on top of those, there are a couple of very important ones, which might not seem so important, but they actually really are. It supports rootless mode, meaning that it does not have to be a root user to do whatever it needs to do. And that means as a result that it is much more secure, infinitely more secure than Docker. It allows lazy pooling of images, which means that it can start running containers before all the layers of an image are pulled, which in turn should speed up everything. And finally, it supports OCI Crypt, which enables support for encrypted images. And there are quite a few other things, but I'm already getting nervous. I want to jump into the demo. So let's see it in action, and then we're going to talk more about it. It all starts with Rancher Desktop. I already installed it and you should install it as well if you do not have it already. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the video about Rancher Desktop. This is not a deep dive into Rancher Desktop. I'm interested in a combination with Nerdy Cuttle. And what really, really, really matters here is that you have to have Rancher Desktop at least version 05. That's the release when the project, the community added the support for Nerdy Cuttle. So go to Kubernetes settings, scroll to the bottom, and you will see a couple of checkboxes that allow you to install certain tools like KubeCuttle, Helm, and a few others. But what matters for this context is that you have to check the box Nerdy Cuttle unless you already have it installed. And then Rancher Desktop will install it for you. Now that I have Nerdy Cuttle, let's take a look at the CLI and see what are the options, what are the subcommands that we can use. Those commands will be familiar. We have run, exec, PS, log, port, stop, start, etc, etc, etc. Those are the same as Docker commands. Those are equivalents to Docker run, Docker exec, Docker PS, and so on and so forth. And the good news is that it looks like all of the commands are there. That might not be true, and we are going to talk about it later, but for now, think of it as a full replacement for Docker. Now, since I have Rancher Desktop up and running, I have Nerdy Cuttle installed, I can start using it right away. I can execute commands like nerdy cuttle this, nerdy cuttle that. However, if you're used to Docker, as I am, you might have developed muscle memory and your fingers might be typing without thinking commands like docker image this, docker image that, and docker container this, and docker container that. So the first thing that I will do, and I recommend you to do as well, is to create an alias and say alias docker equals nerdy cuttle. That way you can continue typing docker commands even though you will not be running Docker, you will be running Nerdy Cuttle that will communicate with Container D running in Rancher Desktop. To make that change permanent, to make that alias permanent, you should probably add it to bash rc or zshrc or whichever shell you are using. And from now on, I can keep executing Docker commands even though I deleted Docker from my system. There is no Docker on this machine. So I will execute Docker help to show you two things. First of all, if we take a look at the usage section, we can see that it says nerdy cuttle, and that's a confirmation that I'm not running Docker anymore. I do not have Docker CLI. I do not have Docker desktop. This is nerdy cuttle pretending to be Docker. 
And the second important thing is that you can see the list of commands that I already showed you when I executed Nerdy Cuttle. Those are all the same Docker commands that you are all used to. So now we are ready. We have Docker without Docker. So let me do some basics and check whether this really works as expected. Can I, for example, list container images by executing docker container ls? And of course I can. I mean, the output is empty because I'm not running any containers, but the point is still the same. I can execute the command and if I would have any containers running there, as I soon will, I would see the list of those containers in exactly the same format as docker would list the containers. I can run containers as well with something like docker container run and then let's say dash dash rm to remove it once it's finished doing whatever it will be doing dash it to get interactive and terminal mode and uh, I will run alpine and I will output some message with echo like hey is it working? And you can see from the output that it did two things. It downloaded all the layers of the Alpine image, which is what you would expect. And it output the message, is it working? So Docker container or Nerdy Cuttle container subcommands are working. I'm not going to go through more of them. You just need to trust me. I've been using this for a long time. It all works. But how about Docker Compose? Can we do Docker Compose this and that? Let me execute something like Docker Compose app and maybe I should do a detached mode. And I already have Docker Compose in this repo, so I do not need to specify the location of the file. I forgot the most important thing, and not the most important, but an important thing to tell you, and that's that all the commands that I'm executing are in a gist, and the address to the gist, the URL to the gist, is in the description of this video. So go and check it out if you want to reproduce what I'm doing. Going back to Docker Compose, we can see that it created two containers, WordPress and Database. This is a silly demo of WordPress, do not judge me for that. I'm not using Docker Compose for many years now, but I'm doing this only because you might be using Docker Compose. And if you're curious about why I'm not using Docker Compose, just let me know and I will organize Ask Me Anything session or maybe a session explaining why Docker Compose is not a good idea. Actually, I already did that a few weeks ago. There is a video that among other things explains why Docker Compose Compose is not a good idea and I just proved that I'm so old that I'm forgetting things that happened a couple of weeks ago. Anyways, Docker Compose is obviously working, it is doing whatever it's supposed to be doing and I can verify that that's really the case by listing all the containers and I can see that there are two containers, MySQL and WordPress. So it is working, it is peach. we can all live happily ever after. And since I do not really need WordPress, I'm not even sure why I use this as an example. Okay, I do not use WordPress either. In any case, I do not need it. I started it only to prove to you that Docker Compose works. And with great satisfaction, I can prove it to you that I can shut it down as well by executing Docker Compose down. And the last important and the most commonly used feature of Docker is to build and push and tag and generally speaking manage container images. So let me check whether that works as well. So let me run docker image build and I'm going to tag it as DevOps Toolkit and I'm going to specify the current directory as the context which is dot in Linux. And then it needs a couple of moments to build all the layers and that's about it, docker image build works as expected even though I do not have docker anymore and I should be able to push that image somewhere for simplicity I will use docker hub but it could be anything else and before I push anything anywhere I should log into the registry that I'm using and the command just like anything else is the same as in docker itself so I can run something like docker login and then pass the username and pass the password and that's about it I'm logged in and I can push the image to my registry. I can tag my images with specific releases and I can list my images and I can do anything else that I might need to do using Docker CLI and Docker itself running in a VM which is Docker Desktop. But in this case I'm using Rancher Desktop as my VM that already has K3S Kubernetes distribution which uses Container D as most of the other Kubernetes distributions are using and now I can even build and manage and run containers through Container D instead of Docker which is deprecated from all Kubernetes distributions except Docker Desktop. So effectively what I'm doing here is going down the right route by using Kubernetes which is powered by container D instead of deprecated stuff. 
And now I'm done. And the only thing left for me is to prune the system from all the stuff that I was doing. I love Docker system prune command because it allows me to quickly wipe the whole system. So let me prune the system by executing Docker system prune. And it's not working. This is the first and potentially the only thing missing, the only thing that prevents me from saying that NerdyCuttle has 100% compatibility with Docker CLI and quite a few other features on top. But hopefully that's not such a big deal. I mean, I use Docker System Prune often, but I can probably live without it. Actually, I will have to live without it because I removed Docker from my system. So that's it. So let's talk about NerdyCuttle as a potential replacement for Docker CLI and the combination with Rancher Desktop, which is a potential replacement for Docker Desktop. Let's start with pros. What are the advantages? What are the good things? Why should you use NerdyCuttle combined with Rancher Desktop? To begin with, NerdyCuttle is a full, complete replacement for Docker CLI, except Docker System Prune. So what I said is actually not true. It's not a complete replacement. It is almost complete replacement. We can use it to run containers directly. You know, Docker container run or nerdy cattle container run commands, or we can run containers through Docker Compose if that's what you prefer, even though you shouldn't. You shouldn't use Docker Compose, but I will let it slide for now. We have Kubernetes and not just any Kubernetes. We have potentially best local Kubernetes distribution, which is Rancher Desktop. And I'm saying the best because it is based on K3S, just as K3D is based on K3S. But on top of that, it has graphical user interface. It allows us to choose Kubernetes version we want to use. It is lightweight, it is fast, it doesn't occupy much memory and CPU. It is absolutely awesome. And finally, it works or almost works or it will soon work on Apple Silicon. So if you're using Apple Silicon like M1, M1 Max, M1 Pro, or whatever Apple is naming their silicon chips, Rancher Desktop might be one of the only options you have. Minikube alone does not work on Apple Silicon. Podman doesn't work on Apple Silicon, or at least I think it doesn't work. The only solutions that you have for Apple Silicon is either Docker Desktop or Rancher Desktop. To be more precise, Rancher Desktop is powered by Lima and Lima can theoretically, maybe one day, we do not know, work with Apple Silicon. So that's a huge advantage. It works on Intel chips and it might work one day, I will talk about it later, on Apple Silicon, it works on Windows and it works on Linux. Even though the support and stability on different operating systems is not on the same level, because after all, Lima and Rancher Desktop that is using Lima are relatively young projects. Now let's talk about disadvantages. Actually, there are no disadvantages except if you're using Apple Silicon. It does not work completely. There are bugs, there are issues. It's almost there, but not there yet, at least not at the time of this recording, which is October 2021. So that's the biggest disadvantage, and that's why I removed it from two out of three computers that I own. Two of them are based on Intel chips, and one is a brand new shiny MacBook Pro and I'm having a lot of troubles over there and I'm still using Docker Desktop. But as soon as those bugs are fixed, Docker Desktop is going out of that computer as well. And then I will be completely Docker Desktop free and using exclusively Rancher Desktop with NerdyCuttle. 